the kingdom of my divine will in the midst of creatures book of heaven volume 35 part 9 december 21st 1937 how the kingdom of the divine will on earth has been decreed in the consistory of the adorable trinity the new breath of god by which the creature will be restored difference between lives and works my poor mind was occupied by the great wonders and prodigies that the divine volition knows how to do when it reigns in the creature and i was thinking to myself what a happy lot to live in it there cannot be greater fortune either in heaven or on earth but how can it ever come to reign upon earth if evils and sins abound so much as to be horrifying only a divine power with one of its greatest prodigies could do it otherwise the kingdom of the divine will will be in heaven but not on earth but while i was thinking this my dear jesus my sweet life visiting my poor soul with unspeakable goodness told me my good daughter it has been decreed in the consistory of the sacrosanct trinity that my divine will will have its kingdom on earth and as many prodigies as this will take we will make them we will hold nothing back in order to have what we want but in operating we always use the simplest ways though powerful such as to overwhelm heaven and earth and all the creatures in the act that we want you must know that in creation it took nothing other than our omnipotent breath to infuse life in man but how many prodigies in that breath we created the soul providing it with the three powers there is a footnote here regarding the word powers meaning intellect memory and will beginning again at the sentence we created the soul providing it with the three powers intellect memory and will true image of our adorable trinity and with the soul he received the heartbeat the breathing the circulation of the blood the motion the warmth the speech the sight what did it take to make all these prodigies in man the simplest act of ours our breath armed with our power and with the race of our love which unable to contain it any longer ran and ran toward him even to the point of making of him the greatest prodigy of the entire work of creation now my daughter since man did not live in our divine will his three powers have become obscured and our adorable image deformed in him in such a way that he has lost the first heartbeat of god's love within his heartbeat and the divine breath within his human breath or rather he has not lost it but he does not feel it and therefore he does not feel the circulation of the divine life the motion of good the warmth of the supreme love the word of God within his own, the sight to be able to look at his creator. All has remained obscured, weakened, and maybe even deformed. 
Now what does it take to restore this man? We will return again to breathe upon him with stronger and increasing love. We will breathe in the depth of his soul. We will blow our breath more strongly into the center of his rebellious will. But so strongly as to shake the evils by which he is trapped. His passions will be knocked down and terrified before the power of our breath. They will feel themselves burning by our divine fire, and the human will will feel the palpitating life of its creator, and it will conceal him like a veil, so that man will return to be the bearer of his creator. Oh, how happy he will feel! With our breath, we will restore him and heal him. We will act like a most tender mother who has a crippled child, and by dint of breathing, whispering, and blowing, she pours herself over her child. And only when she has healed him and rendered him beautiful as she wanted him to be, then will she stop blowing her breath upon him. And the power of our breath will not leave him. And only when we see him coming back into our paternal arms, beautiful as we want him to be, then will we stop breathing on him. Then will we feel that our child has recognized our paternal goodness and how much we love him. See then what it takes to make our will come to reign upon earth the power of our omnipotent breath. With it, we will renew our life in him. All the truths I have manifested to you, the great prodigies of the living in my will, will be the most beautiful and greatest properties which I will give to him as gift. This, too, is a sure sign that its kingdom will come upon earth. Because if I speak, first I do deeds, and then I speak. My word is the confirmation of the gift, of the prodigies I want to do. Hence, why would I expose my divine properties and make them known, if its kingdom were not bound to come upon the earth? Now I will continue on the same topic of the date, December 18th. How our acts done in the divine will turn into life. So I was thinking to myself, but in the divine order, what will become of the many good works which have not come out from within the divine volition, and which therefore cannot be life, but works? because the seed of its life is missing in them. And my sweet Jesus, always benign, added, My daughter, by possessing by nature its creative life, it is no wonder that each act of the creature done in my will, even a little I love you, is as though matured in the center of its divine life and as though naturally, it acquires its life. All that is done in my will is regenerated in our eternal love and acquires the long offspring of many divine lives, which are exclusively ours. Now, the good works not done in our will can be like many beautiful ornaments in our creative work, some more beautiful, some less, but never life. In the order of creation, also, there are lives and there are ornaments. Flowers are not lives, yet 
They form a beautiful ornament to the earth, though not a permanent one. Fruits are not life, but they serve to nourish man and to let him taste the many varied sweetnesses, though they are not durable, and man cannot always enjoy them any time he wants. If fruits and flowers were lives, man would be able to enjoy them any time he wanted to. The sun, the sky, the stars, the wind, the sea are not lives. But since they are our works, how much good do they not do? First of all, they serve as the most beautiful primary residence for man. What are their homes compared to the great dwelling that we made of the whole universe? There is a blue vault dotted with gold that never fades. There is a sun that is never extinguished. There is air which, letting itself be breathed, gives life. There is a wind that purifies and refreshes, and then many more things. It was necessary for our love to make an assortment of lives and of works, because they had to serve to make man happy, and they had to serve for the decorum the decency, and the dwelling of the one whom we created with so much love. So, since we had made more than enough works, to him was given the task to enjoy our works and to live in our divine will, in order to form many lives of love and of glory for he who loved him so much. But the difference between works and life is great. Life does not perish, while works are subject to many changes. And if they are not upright and holy, instead of forming the ornament, they form our dishonor and their confusion, and maybe even their condemnation. Fiat. December 25th, 1937. The Descent of the Divine Word. How he departed from heaven while still remaining in heaven. Prodigies of the Incarnation. The Beginning of the Feast of the Divine Will. How in his divine works God puts aside the human ingratitude. The graft. How the love of Jesus paid for all and ransomed us. I was following the acts of the divine will, and my poor mind paused in the act of the descent of the divine word upon earth. My God, how many wonders, how many surprises of love, of power, of divine wisdom. They are so great and so many that one does not know where to begin to tell them. And my beloved Jesus, as though inundated in his sea of love, that rose its waves, surprising me, told me, My blessed daughter, in my descent upon earth, the wonders, the ardor of our love, were so great and so many that neither angels nor creatures are capable of understanding what our divinity operated in the mystery of my incarnation. Now you must know that our Supreme Being 
possesses by nature its incessant motion. If this motion could cease even for one instant, which cannot be, all things would remain paralyzed and with no life, because all things, the life, the preservation, and everything that exists in heaven and on earth, everything is dependent upon that motion. Therefore, in descending from heaven to earth, I, Word and Son of the Father, departed from our primary motion, or rather, I stayed and I left. The Father and the Holy Spirit descended with me. They were concurrent. Neither did I do a single act, if not together with them. And they remained on the throne, full of majesty, in the celestial regions. So, as I left, my immensity, my love, and my power descended together with me. And my love, which seems incredible and is not satisfied if it does not form many lives from my life for as many existing creatures, not only did so, but it formed and multiplied my life everywhere and in every place and holding my immensity in its power, my love filled it with many of my lives, so that each one might have a life of mine for himself alone, and the divinity might have the glory and the honor of as many divine lives of ours, for as many things and creatures as we issued to daylight. Ah, our love repaid us for the work of creation, and by forming many of our lives, it not only repaid us, but it gave us even more than what we had done. Our divinity remained enraptured and felt so sweet an enchantment in seeing the devices and stratagems of our love and seeing so many of our lives being spread out, since our love made use of our immensity as the circumference in which to place them. Therefore, while my life could be seen as the center, my immensity and power were the circumference in which these innumerable lives were deposited and finding everything and every one, gave themselves in order to love us and to be loved. I remained surprised in hearing this, and my sweet Jesus, giving me no time, immediately added, My daughter, do not be surprised. When we operate, we do complete works, so that no one can ever say, he didn't do this for me. His life is not fully my own. Ah, love cannot arise when things are not one's own and are not held in one's power. Besides, isn't this what the sun also does, which is a work created by us? That while making itself light for the eyes, up to filling them completely with light, at the same time, it is light, full and whole, for the hand that works and for the step that walks, in such way that all created things and creatures can say, The sun is mine. And while the center of the sun is in the height of the atmosphere, its light departs and remains. And with its circumference of light, it invests the earth 
and becomes life and light for each one. Even for the little flower and the tiny blade of grass. Yet the sun is not life. It possesses light, and light does it give, together with all the goods that its light contains. While our divinity is life, the author and life of everything. Therefore, in descending from heaven to earth, I had to do complete acts, and more than sun, make a display of my life, multiplying it into many lives, so that heaven, earth, and everyone might possess my life. Had it not been so, it would not have been a work worthy of our wisdom and of our infinite love. Jesus remained silent, and I continued to think about the birth of little baby Jesus. And he added, Little daughter of my will, the feast of my birth was the feast, or rather, the beginning of the feast of my divine will. As the angels were singing, Glory to God in the highest heavens, and peace on earth to men of good will. The angels and the creation became all festive, and while celebrating my birth, they celebrated the feast of my divine will. In fact, with my birth, our divinity received true glory unto the highest heavens, and men will have true peace when they recognize my will, giving it dominion and allowing it to reign. Only then will their wills become good. They will feel the divine strength, and heaven and earth will then sing together, Glory to God in the highest heavens, and peace on earth to the men who will possess the divine will. Everything will become good in men, and they will possess true peace. Then I continue to think of the birth of the little king, Jesus. And I said to him, Cute little baby, tell me, what did you do when you saw the great human in gratitude in the face of your great love? And Jesus, my daughter, had I taken into account the human in gratitude before my great love? I would have taken the way to go back to heaven, but I would have saddened and embittered my love and turned the feast into mourning. So, would you like to know what I do in my greatest works in order to make them more beautiful? With pomp and with the greatest display of my love, I put everything aside human ingratitude, sins, miseries, weaknesses. And I give course to my greatest works, as if those things did not exist. Had I wanted to pay attention to the evils of man, I would not have been able to do great works, or put all my love in the field. I would have remained hampered, suffocated in my own love. Instead, in order to be free in my works and to make them as beautiful as I can, I put everything aside. And if necessary, I cover everything with my love so that I see nothing but my love and my will. And in this way, I move forward in my greatest works, and I perform them as if no one had offended me. Because, for the sake of our glory, nothing must be lacking to the decorum, 
to the beauty and the greatness of our works. This is why I would like that you too would not occupy yourself with your weaknesses, your evils, and your troubles. In fact, the more the creature thinks about those, the weaker she feels, and the more the poor one feels drowned by evils, while her miseries press round her more tightly. By thinking about it, weakness feeds more weakness, and the poor creature keeps falling even more. Evils acquire more strength. Miseries make her die of hunger. On the other hand, by not thinking about them, they disappear of their own. The complete opposite happens with what is good. A good feeds another good. One act of love calls for more love. One abandonment in my will makes her feel the new divine life within herself. Hence the thought of what is good forms the nourishment and the strength in order to do more good. This is why I want your thoughts to be occupied by nothing other than loving me and living in my will. My love will burn up all your miseries and all your evils, and my divine volition will become your life, making use of your miseries as the footstool on which to raise its throne. Then I continued to think about the little newborn Jesus, and oh, how it broke my heart to see him crying, sobbing, wailing and shivering with cold. I wanted to place an I love you of mine for each pain and each tear of the divine little one to warm him and to calm his crying. And Jesus added, My daughter, I feel one who lives in my will, in my tears and in my wailing. I feel her flowing in my crying sobs and in the shivering of my baby limbs. And by virtue of my will which she possesses, she turns the tears into smiles and the sobs into heavenly joys. With her lullabies of love, she warms me and changes the pains into kisses and embraces. Even more, you must know that one who lives in my will receives continuous grafts of all that my humanity does. If I think, I graft her thoughts. If I speak and pray, I graft her word. If I work, I graft her hands. There is nothing I do that does not form a graft for the creature to make of her the repetition of my life. More so, since my divine will being in her, I can find my power, my sanctity, and my very life to do whatever I want with her. How many prodigies can I not do? when I find my will in the creature. I came upon earth to cover everything with my love, to drown the evils themselves and burn everything up with my love. By justice, I wanted to repay my father because it was just that he be given back the honor, the glory, the love, and the gratitude that everyone owed him. Hence, my love gave itself no respite. It filled the voids of his glory and of his honor. 
to the extent of repaying by dint of love the divinity who had created a heaven a sun a wind a sea a flowery earth and all the rest while man had uttered not even a thank you for the so many goods he had received acting as the true thief the ungrateful one the usurper of our goods and my love ran and ran in order to fill the abysses of distance between the creator and the creature it repaid my celestial father by dint of love and by way of love it purchased back all human generations to give back to them again the life of my divine will my love had already formed many lives of divine will as their ransom and when it is my love that pays the value is such that it can afford to pay for all and buy back whatever it wants therefore you have already been purchased by my love so let me enjoy you and possess you fiat you have reached the end of the book of heaven volume 35 part 9 fiat <laughs>